So I was sitting here working on uh, some stuff for a brand new client that I met with last night after doing his measurements and um, kind of talking with him about uh, getting to know his knowledge level about nutrition. And I thought this was a perfect opportunity to share something here for our food challenge that we're doing for February here on our website. And it came about because he had a lot of questions about how much protein he should be eating. So questions that I'm sure a lot of you have, and we, we talk about this quite a bit, things like how much protein should I be eating? You know, a quick Google search and asking about protein, and you can get vastly different numbers from you shouldn't have more than this amount, or you should eat this amount, and people who are, you should eat only protein, like there's just like the, the full range of, 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 um, of opinions about protein. And what really came about was our conversation was his understanding about what protein actually does. And once you understand what protein is for in the body, then it becomes more reasonable to understand how protein actually works and what, what proteins you should be eating. Now, because he's also a vegetarian, and I myself am mostly vegetarian, um, you know, reaching those protein numbers can be a challenge. And so we had a great discussion about it. And I thought that I would share more information about how I come up with the number of protein he needs to eat, the types of proteins that he should be eating, and why that protein is so important. So I thought I would share that here in the group today. So when I talked to this person last night, uh, when I asked him if he understood what proteins does in the body, his uh, response was that he actually didn't know what proteins do. And, you know, I, I think I take for granted the fact that I'm in nutrition as a full-time career and I understand nutrition very, very well, but it also kind of disappoints me that we can, as adults, go through school, through basic sciences, and even go through college, undergraduate, and most every program requires us to take some type of, um, of biological science of some kind and not understand the basic concept of macros, proteins, fats, carbohydrates, and calories. And, you know, this is someone who is in his 30s, and so he's not like uh, just out of school uh, and may, you know, may have not learned because he just was lazy about it, or someone who was significantly older that may not have have, have learned it years and years ago and just didn't remember. This is someone who genuinely was never taught about what proteins actually do in the body. And that's very discouraging for me uh, as a dietitian and nutritionist is, is that we don't know what that protein does. So basically proteins are building blocks of muscle tissue. Proteins are amino acids strung together in certain strands and those rebuild muscle fibers that you break down. So if you're going to the gym and working out, the misconception about the gym is that I want to go build muscle, I need to go work out harder. And the problem with that theory is, is that working out actually tears the muscles. What builds the muscles back is the proteins that you're putting in the body. And the reason you want muscles to grow and to, to be lean and to be strong, not to be a bodybuilder, and this is where a lot of women kind of misunderstand um, uh, muscle strengthening, is that the stronger a muscle is and the leaner that muscle is, the more calories it burns. So if, you're, if your challenge is to lose weight, the more muscle mass you have or the, the tighter your muscles are, the more calories those burn and you end up losing weight in the process. So proteins are used to rebuild that muscle once you tear it or break it down or stress it. So in order to determine how much protein you have to have, it's not some guess. It's not that I need to eat, you know, this amount of protein because this is what Google says, or my friend is doing, this is where I really get um, frustrated with the, the idea of the diet culture that we talked about yesterday. And my friend who does keto says that, you know, X percentage of their calories comes from, from proteins, but they don't really know what those calories are. Like they don't really have a baseline to understand what those macro numbers really should be. But when you're calculating out someone's macronutrients, protein is the very, very first thing that we can calculate because I can measure your lean muscle mass. Now, I have a, a specific tool that I use, an electronic tool that I use to discover your lean mass tissue, which you can find these in most commercial gyms have, typically have these, this equipment to determine that. And once we know your overall lean muscle value, 
I can then extrapolate from that how much protein your body needs to maintain that level of muscle worked under normal stress. So I can come up with a real number for that protein. Now, I'm not going to get into the full macros, but from there, then I can determine how much carbohydrates and fat you need based off of your exercise level and what your long-term goals are. So when someone says they eat, you know, this number of protein, but they don't understand the whole value of macronutrients, then they're really just making an, uh, an, I would say an educated guess, but it's likely just a Google guess is what they're actually doing and finding some random number. Now, there are some simple tools, rules of thumb out there that kind of ring, ring true. Uh, if you were of an average body type, and I'm talking average, I'm not talking overweight, and I'm, I'm gonna be real transparent here. When I say overweight, I mean, if you're 20 pounds over what, you're, what you should be, then you're overweight. 30 pounds more than you should weigh, 30 pounds of, of body fat more than you should have is clinically obese. So 20 pounds is overweight. So if you think in your head, oh, I need to lose 20 pounds, then you're overweight. So this might not uh, equate exactly because if you're overweight, these numbers can be skewed. But as a rule of thumb for most healthy people, one gram of protein per body weight, body weight. You see body weight's different than body fat or body lean mass, but a healthy, normal, uh, non-overweight adult has about a certain, certain amount of protein based off of their current weight. And by using that number, we can use about one gram per weight to com come up with that number. But if you're overweight, that number isn't true. That's not necessarily true. And that is not how we dietitians calculate the number of protein grams that you need. We actually have to have your height, your weight, your age, and your density of your body mass in order to determine exactly how much that is. And it's a little different. It's about a 2.7 kilograms per, two, per kilogram of lean body weight. Lots of math involved in that that you don't need to worry about. The main point here is that this is not a number that we guess at. Protein's not a number that you just pull out of the air because Google says you need this much um, for it. And also, I find that most people are very unrealistic with their current weight <clears throat> as to whether that weight is a healthy weight or if they're overweight. And again, not to, not to be the, the fat shamer uh, of the world, but you know, as a whole, we've allowed ourselves to believe that 20 extra pounds of body fat is not unhealthy or that it's not overweight when in reality it is overweight and we need to be really truthful with ourselves when we weigh more than we really should. And so using these numbers found on Google is not the answer for you to find out the proteins that you need. You really need to get help from a professional that understands how to do that. And that's why we're here. That's why we help people every day come up with those real numbers. Now, the other thing that I see is that so many people here in the group, especially uh, here in the group, just don't eat protein at all. I don't know why people decided that they just don't need to eat protein. A lot of people say that protein doesn't sit well with them. It's so heavy. Their digestive system doesn't function well with proteins. And I have to be really, really honest. Protein is actually one of the easiest things for your body to metabolize. Proteins are, are necessary. It's one of the first things the body really needs. So proteins are actually really healthy for it. Now, I'm one of the very few people in the world who is allergic to some proteins, pro, pro, some, some meat proteins. Not everybody can eat all meat proteins, but that's a very specialized food sensitivity test to determine that. You can't just say that because you don't, uh, because chicken doesn't sit well with your stomach that you're allergic to it. Uh, you need to have a food sensitivity test to, to do that. The other thing is there are other, lots of other proteins, things like tofu. Uh, a lot of women are afraid of soy products because of, uh, of, of what they've heard that it's an estrogen, um, that it screws up their estrogen levels. And quite honestly, you really can't eat enough tofu to really bother your estrogen sensitivity. So there's even that alone is a misinformation that most doctors are putting out there that just simply isn't accurate. So I want you to be open-minded to your protein. I want you to ask questions about how much protein you should be eating. And I want you to understand if you, if I give you a real number, let's, I'm going to give you some real numbers here on an average day, I need to consume about 300 grams of protein. Now that's kind of hard to understand for people what 300 grams is, but in, in general rule of thumb, a chicken breast, a regular chicken breast is going to have about 40 grams of protein. 
40 grams is all that's in that chicken breast. And I need to eat 300 grams of protein. So if I don't eat protein at every single meal that I have, and I eat eight meals a day with snacks and meals and other snacks, if I don't eat protein in every single meal that I have, there is absolutely no conceivable way that I can reach my protein number that I have to have to keep my body healthy. And so I think that if you're having trouble with this, if you're struggling to find out those numbers, you should reach out to one of our coaches and really ask some questions about how to get that protein number uh, for you and also how to reach those protein goals. I really, really get disappointed when I see people who skip meals and people who also don't eat protein with all of their meals because I know they're not getting enough. Again, going back to my very first post about tracking, if you're not tracking these numbers and you don't know how much protein you're eating, it's entirely impossible for us to help figure out what those numbers need to be. So start with your tracking first, write down every single thing that you're eating and put it in some type of food tracker that can track your, your, your macros, and then get with one of your coaches and find out what your protein levels should be so that you can get on track with that first. That's my biggest, one of my biggest tips. It's one of the things I talk about so much with my own clients every single day. And uh, I got to get back to calculating my brand new client's number so that he can get tracking and understand how to help make his body better. So if you need help, let us know. We'll be glad to give you as much help as we possibly can. Y'all have a great day. I'll see you on the next one.